Good afternoon, it's Russ Moan from InPlay. And today I'm going to be talking about InPlay's IN100, some of the RF test capabilities we have um, that comes with our evaluation kits. Specifically, we're going to talk about the direct test mode, or DTM, feature that we've built into the NanoBeacon config tool. So just as a note, the IN100 device has been fully qualified against uh, the Bluetooth SIG 5.3 version of the spec. So you can find our qualifying number, our QDID, on the website, and the link will be, be, be provided in the video. So that being said, um, I've got an evaluation kit hooked up to a spectrum analyzer with a vector signal analyzer in it this time, and um, connected to the PC via the USB cable. I started up the Nano Beacon Config tool here, and I'll probe through the UART, connect. It says successfully connected to the device. And again, I've, I've already scrolled, uh, clicked on the RF test tab here on the left-hand side. And the section I'm going to be using today is this direct test mode, or DTM. So direct, direct test mode on the transmit side, the intention is really to put the chip in a state where it's putting out a known pattern of data. And with that known pattern of data, there's an expected um, modulation characteristic that is seen basically um, after being demodulated. And there are standard specifications or, or characteristics. This is a way we measure the fidelity of the actual um, modulation transmission. So the options here are the, the center frequency channel. So all of the channels for VLE are available. I'm going to select uh, 2440 or channel 19 in the middle of the band. And we can set the data length. Um, this is in number of bytes. And the payload pattern is going to determine basically what, what sort of data is being sent out. So a PRV PS9 is a pseudorandom bit sequence um, with a certain um, repeatability. Zero, zero, four zeros and four ones is another data pattern. Um, and then another data pattern is 0101 zero, one, zero, one repeated. Um, and then there's other options as well, all ones, all zeros, and then the kind of the flip of uh, the previous patterns. So for right now, two of the most common ones for checking modulation characteristics are the four zeros, four ones, and the zero, one, zero, one. Um, because they exercise kind of two different aspects of, um, of the modulation itself. So, and the, the phi level is chosen for one megabit phi. And after setting that up, I'll, I'll press start test. And on the spectrum analyzer, you can see um, it, it goes through a startup and basically sends out a burst and then it, it quiets down and repeats itself so you can see the, the pattern, the, the power actually going up and down in time. So this is in the spectrum, and you can see that it's, it's centered at 2440 megahertz. Um, and you can't really tell much about the data though, except that the power, the RF power itself is going up and down. In order to demodulate the data and actually analyze the modulation characteristics, we have to use a vector signal analyzer. And that is a, built-in tool with this particular spectrum analyzer. So for that, I will go to mode here and select VSA, which will bring up a new VSA window. And I'm gonna do, I have to load a configuration for the VLE standard. So I go to measure, and for digital standard, I'm gonna select Bluetooth low energy and load that one. And here I have, so it, it's loaded up a pre-configuration for Bluetooth low energy. And the, so what's being shown here is a demodulation of the actual um, packets sent out on air. So the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the difference in frequency from the center of the channel. And it's, um, to make it a little more steady, I'm gonna change the triggering to trigger on the IF power and I'll put that at minus 10 dBm. And now the, um, the image is a bit clearer. So you can see, um, this is, like I said, the, the modulation frequency 
as a function of time for this particular packet. And then this is multiple packets, this is power on the y-axis and time again. So you see the, the power is high, you know, roughly 5 dBm, and then it drops down to minus 55, minus 60, and then turns back on, so it's bursting. And in the right-hand side here, we can see some of the measured characteristics of the data. And I'll just do a, a single run so the numbers stop moving. And you can see there's a frequency error, um, FSK deviation error, FSK measured deviation. So this one is interesting. This, the standard is 250 kilohertz. And for this particular run, it got 246.35. So that's well within the, the tolerance of the, the standard specification. And this also gives the output power and also the carrier frequency error. So this is, it's saying it's off by minus 19.6 kilohertz, which is also within spec, but it could be it could be brought up a little more closely with the XO capacitors, which is covered in a different video. So this is the pattern you see when there are four ones and four zeros. And I will change the, the pattern being sent and we can see how the actual data being received by this demodulator changes. So I will stop this test and change the pattern to 0101. Zero, zero, one start the test and here you can see the demodulated waveform showing the the change from all the way positive deviations roughly 250 kilohertz to minus 250 kilohertz every uh, microsecond um, and again this is uh, the same characteristics can be measured uh, over here and recorded so this is one way that you can measure exactly how good the, the uh, modulation fidelity of the nanobeacon device is.